So my wife ran away with another man. I thought my family would be the ones to support me through this hard time that I'm dealing with. But what did my brother do? He mocked me, made fun of me in front of an entire group of people. And let me tell you exactly what he had to say. Always, for as long as I can remember, my older brother Jordan's been my biggest bully. I've tried to tell him kindly or violently since we were kids. In fact, because of him, they started picking on me at school because he brought family nicknames into the classroom. So it wasn't the best time for me. My favorite time was when I left home to go away with Diane. Now, my ex-wife. And a part of the reason I'm writing this... Diane and I were together for three years, a prudent time in which we were there for each other, even with plans to start a family, but it all fell apart because of a guy whose name I don't even know. <laughs> Let's call him Joe. Joe was a jerk who wrote to Diane day and night, secretly romancing her, and she, like a good wife, wavered to him, well, to let him do whatever he wanted. She confessed to me that she's been corresponding with him for a while, but in the style of, quote, this guy writes to me and I've been writing back, nothing wrong, but I thought you should know about it. Note how at no point did she say to me, I'm going to stop, or say, sorry, I didn't tell you about it sooner. No, she simply notified me so as not to make me look so bad as her husband. What was I supposed to say to her? Thank you so much for telling me you played along with the man. I mean, of course I got mad about it and she got mad too. And that's when our problems escalated. If you're wondering why I decided to bring Jordan into the conversation at the beginning, it was because this is related. I'm just taking my time to put them into context. Anyways, Diane and I start having a bad, very, very bad season, of which we only had about two good days. Every outing or conversation we had ended in an argument or a fight, and it was wearing me out mentally. Her too. That's why we decide to go to couples therapy, but I feel, being honest with you, that only ended up making the situation worse. We went twice, reluctantly, and by the end of the session, we felt like we weren't right for each other, but because of all this, love can do anything and all that nonsense, we decide to keep trying and just thinking it's, you know, a rough patch and we're gonna get past it. One day, Diane confessed to me that she was planning to take a trip alone. This devastated me as she's been planning it without mentioning it to me at all or even consulting me. I'm not saying I should have to give her permission, but for the hell of it, we're spouses. It's normal and almost mandatory just to know that kind of thing. In retrospect, I should have thought everything through, since she had also told me that she sometimes thought about whether we should be with each other or not. But if that was the case, she would not be with Joe so-and-so, you know? Ah, well, I guess you know where I'm going with this story, right? One day, coming home from work, I find that Diane's suitcase is gone. And so are her clothes, so is her makeup, and most of her belongings. I felt some type when I saw that her toothbrush was in the bathroom, but I lost hope when I noticed that some of her books were gone. Her thick books, right? Not the kind of books you take on a trip. If you don't want to be glued to their pages all the time, so I called her, or I should say I rather tried to call her a thousand times, but nothing. Rather than thinking something hard, I went straight to the worst case scenario. So I decided to call several acquaintances, including her family, to see if she would show up. I was about to call the police even. Since she showed no signs of life absolutely anywhere, and to top it all off, her social networks were taken down. It wasn't until I talked to her best friend that she told me what was going on. She told me to meet her at the mall and tell me, but in desperation, I told her to tell me over the phone. She called me and told me that she had left with someone else. She didn't know where Diane went exactly. She just told me that she was going with somebody else and that they've been talking about her interest in doing this for a long time. She just did not think it was possible to get it done. She said, well, Diddy is not that brave. And just hearing her nickname made me sick to my stomach. According to this friend, she always advocated for Diana and I just to stay together. And she feels bad that she did not do more about it. I try as I might. I could not get upset with her at all since it wasn't her fault. And that's when the hatred for Diane began. Something that started almost automatically and although bitter, at least it helped me not cry for that woman. 
So, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm going off topic here. <laughs> Diane left me, that's the story. I've been dealing with it and it's been a complicated process. One of the toughest things of my life, ever, well, her own family tells me she did wrong. Being the last communication I had with them, but now Jordan enters the formula. I don't have many friends. Most of the people I know are people I've had to relate with by obligation. You know, classmates, workmates, and whatnot. And the ones I frequent the most are my family. Jordan included. I left home before him and he got a woman, uh, a model, even younger than me, with whom he stayed at my parents' house. Every time I went to visit my parents, he would be there and I never criticized him for not moving somewhere else, but everyone makes his own life... I got to tell him about the whole Diane thing, and he was my biggest advisor through the whole process, before, during, and after. Many will say why, but it's because in romantic matters, I feel Jordan takes off his bully chip to give good advice or at least some support. He told me Diane was a certain slur and a bully for everything she did to me. He never liked her, and I believe him because several things he said about her in the past, but at this point, it's the same. He lent me his shoulder to cry on and let me feel weak, and he supported me as a brother, but only to stab me in the back. A week ago, we had the family Thanksgiving dinner, so we got together with other cousins and uncles, and this year my grandparents had passed away, so the mood was already a little low. My brother, the family clown, and two other cousins were rowdy as usual, and with a few too many drinks, so they decided to do a recap of the highlights of the year as stand-up. All was well and good until they got to me. I've never felt so humiliated by my brother. As he started talking about Diane and about how she cheated on me, even telling me to my face, the worst part of the case was that everyone started laughing until they almost fell out of their chairs. And, ah, uh, there. I committed one of the first faults against bullies, don't show annoyance. When you saw that my face said, don't go on, please, I don't like this, that's when they start to do it more. And more members of the party joined in, and in no time at all, I had the whole family behind me laughing in my face and dropping all of other topics of conversation to focus on me. Jordan's baby was even crying in the other room, and nobody was paying attention to him. When I told Jordan to go see his son... He just said, don't worry, he won't leave me, <laughs> and kept laughing like a brute. I went myself, but I looked like a spoiled sport for leaving, and part of it's because I was uncomfortable, obviously, but I felt bad that my little nephew was abandoned while the adults were making so much noise. I felt like the laughing stock of the entire universe, and Jordan even went so far as to say very private things about my situation, and... For a minuscule second, coupled with the fact that I wanted to beat my brother to a pulp, but I would lose out because of him being a hundred pounds behemoth, he went so far as to surpass Deanne and the level of hatred I feel for someone. For a few moments, I wished on him everything I wished on Diane. And more, even. I'm not a vindictive person, but I hope Jordan can someday feel the shame and humiliation I went through that night. The most surreal thing about this case is that my parents were useless in helping me. I told them later that night to stand up for me, or at least reprimand him. Something. Well, they were useless, I'm telling you. Uh, my mom just said that, quote, It's all in fair play, and father said if you're so worried about Jordan spitting out the soup, you shouldn't have told him anything. Throwing the blame on me, obviously. To this day, I don't understand how it was that I stayed at dinner that day, as I was uncomfortable to the max. I guess it was the fact that I knew if I made others notice my discomfort, it would only add fuel to the fire. I want to vent to you guys and just tell me if I was right. My brother is a moron, and I know, but at this point, my desperation is simply too much to bear. and I wanted to get rid of this and get it off of my chest. Update number one. I did the best I could, or the worst depending on who's taking it in. I decided to talk to Jordan about the whole Thanksgiving thing. I tried to do it so I could have a quiet holiday season, but the result made me want to leave town. I came home one day, a day when I was very angry about everything that happened. 
I really can't describe how much I hated everything that night, and I wanted to talk to him because after much reflection, I understood that maybe it wasn't him who was talking, but the drunkness, and if so, maybe just maybe the matter could have been solved. Not with my parents, because they were 100% sane, but Jordan was not, so I asked him nicely to apologize and, you know, not to do that kind of show again. First, he greeted me as if nothing happened, welcoming me to my parents' house. I told him I had to talk to him privately, and he invited me to lunch. As mom had already made food, I insisted that it wasn't going to be long, so we ended up in the living room clearly uncomfortable. I felt that he already knew what we were going to talk about, and it's clear that he did not want to touch those points in my mentality. Well, I came to believe it's because he felt bad or even regretful, but nothing further from the truth. Look, I got to analyzing what I said the other day, and while I was somewhat abrupt, I feel that you're largely to blame for the matter. First of all, you have no business paying attention to us, it was all in play, and secondly, I was upset by what you were saying about my son. I know how to take care of him, and if Ari wasn't with him at the time, it's because he didn't need it. And now that we've touched on the whole point, I must also say that you disappoint me a little by showing yourself to be so passive about the situation, like a marshmallow that knows it's about to fall off the stick, but keeps burning anyways, until it becomes a bitter piece of candy. If you ask me what I've done in this situation, I would have sought out my wife and fought for her, beating the crap out of the other guy, but since I'm not you, then I'm just left to see how I end up the loser in a conflict that I brought on myself. Well, I did the best I could, but I couldn't help it. I punched him in the face after he was done talking. He starts screaming almost immediately like a coward, calling for help from everybody in the dining room. And they had come over just to calm the whole thing down, but I went on a rampage with him. I yelled at him, kicked him, punched him in the face and his belly, which I know I should not have heard at all because of how flabby he is. And everybody showed up and got me off of him. Although the guy weighs twice as much as me, he also had a hard time even getting up to defend himself, and I was afraid that he might fight back. Now, there's something I haven't told you about my brother, and it's our roots. We live in, quote, the hood, and that's something that modeled us during our childhood. Well, I never wanted to be related to the activities around. My brother, well, he's not the stereotypical gangster, but he's associated with some, and messing with him is messing with a lot of people. That moment, I could not care less about his status, and rampaged him like there was no tomorrow. I didn't care if the next morning some of his friends would appear at my door, or that some accident would happen to me in the next days to come. To me, that would be even better. <laughs> and that way, I would not spend the holidays like a boring sea cucumber at my place. Still, I smacked the beef out of him. In retrospect, I think I covered myself with the fact that he would not make drastic moves to his own family, but there we were, fighting in the middle of the living room, just like a wildlife documentary. Ah, well, I didn't say anything else and came home when my parents and his wife showed up. I wanted to leave without wanting to have anything to do with him or anyone else in the family. My phone starts ringing off the hook, as everybody would start to lecture me and reapproach me for my attitude, not knowing that I was simply using the advice given to me by my brother, my big brother. Did he want me to defend myself? Well, I did, and I don't give a dang if he says it's against the wrong person. He's also the cause of my suffering, so I plucked up the courage to face him. My brother, unlike me, is quite popular, and to get in trouble with him is to have the whole town against you. And if I've already had a great humiliation after Thanksgiving dinner, with this I can dig my own grave. Anyways, I'm writing this from the sadness that comes from the thought that now I'm more alone than ever. Because as I look for support, I feel that more doors are closing in on me. In that case, perhaps by writing to you. At any moment, you may abandon me. And yet, I feel that I'm not the wrong one here. I know that more than one of you has to go through a situation like this, so... Let me know. Update number two. This is very, very delicate. Just a few hours ago, I was talking to Erie, my brother's wife, my sister-in-law, and she confessed some pretty strong things to me. I have to get this off my chest, and that's why I'm coming to you guys. You see, my situation with the family got sour to the point of not even spending New Year's with them. 
I decide to spend it alone watching some series with a beer in my hand. I'm not going to say it was sad since I finally had some peace of mind, but the idea that it was a night like any other, well, I could make anyone's face look long. Although they didn't write me to say hello or wish me a happy new year either. I want to believe that the lack of my presence along with the passing of my grandparents would make it one of the worst dates that we could have had as a family. But Erie did not arrive to offer solutions or reconcile. She did not even show up to stick up for the family or even to touch on the subject, but something, to my point of life, far worse. She came to confess something to me about Jordan. She was not very happy with my brother Jordan. Whether it was one thing or the other, the truth was that Jordan was not the best husband in the world. Whether it's because of his drinking problem or the fact that he demanded more attention than the baby itself, she didn't feel that she could handle such an uncomfortable life. So she asked me what I could do since I also went through a similar situation. While I had to clarify a lot of things for her, I just told her that she has to be sure if Jordan was the love of her life or not, and if she saw herself with him for at least three to five years into the future. She told me that she was talking about divorce. Touching on it lightly, but that was enough to make him much angrier, saying that he had not fought so hard for the marriage just to be put aside like this. Then he would bring up the baby as an excuse, and it was stooping pretty low, I thought. So, I told her what I thought of my brother, and she told me that, ironically, she was also thinking of running away. But she knew well my situation and how uncomfortable it could be for the person involved. But I had to clarify certain detail. If she was leaving, it's because my brother is an idiot. But in my case, Diane left simply because she is, well, <laughs> not a good person who wanted to leave me alone because the love was gone a little bit. Or maybe for other, more real reasons, what do I know? We kept talking until the talk got a little murkier, saying that she never supported Jordan's treatment of me, being a little too rough, and that in the long run, it could splash back on her as well. She even told me that she admired me for the kind of person I was, and that my family could not respect that because we were all a bunch of idiots. As horrible and classist as that sounds... She told me a little more about her relationship with Jordan and about how it was largely fostered by pressure. I mean, Jordan is a giant allied with some uh, sleazy gangs and he has two choices, either go with him or go with him. <laughs> because there's no other option. That's when I understood a lot of things, but I say the conversation got murky because Ari started hinting at some things to me. The compliments to me were getting a little over the top. When I noticed how she was getting closer and closer to me, I had to make a stop. She cried and apologized and said her initial plan was even to sleep with me before leaving. Just for indirect revenge towards Jordan and compensation for me, but I told her no. She just could not do that for her own morals and they had a child together. And as much as I hated my brother, there's codes for that. Though, not just because of that, but because if he found out, my brother would break my family barriers between us. As if he needed any other reason to beat the crap out of me. So, I politely told her no, and that ideally she should leave. It pains me to be in the position that she's in, but only she'll know what to do about it, and I wished her well and she left. The last thing I asked her was about what would happen to the baby, and she said, Well, I'll see what I do with it, don't worry, thank you. And since then, I haven't seen her since. Update number three. Hey guys, I'm back. I went back to talk to the family, although not in the best condition. My parents called me at first because they needed assistance with some things, but then when I was already on site, Jordan appeared. Slightly thinner and with a somber expression. I felt the worst when he appeared for, although thin... He was still a hulk in comparison to me. <laughs> but before I could say or do anything, he said, Take it easy. And I was wedged into the living room chair. First of all, they asked me how I was doing, even though no one believed they cared about that. Then they asked me about Erie, as something had happened to her. I was told that she left a note at the house apologizing to Jordan and telling him that she had left with another man taking their little boy and moving far, far away, recommending not to go looking for them so as not to waste energy, as they would be, quote, be out of the country by then. When I saw the letter, I noticed how Jordan was holding back tears. 
He's always been somebody with a very rough complexion when he's not making fun of somebody with a beer in his hand. Jordan's the kind of guy who can mess with you, but when you start to mess with him, oh boy, uh, you'll have the whole army after you. But luckily, I had not done anything wrong, and the eerie thing we're talking about, so I had nothing to worry about. The note said that she ran off with another man and they tried to contact anybody who had a relationship with Erie. I was told that they even talked to people who studied with her in high school and that I hadn't seen them for thousands of years. This action indirectly caused people to start spreading rumors about how Jordan's wife left him and after he had teased his brother so much about the same situation. I was contacted precisely because I had gone through the same scenario and maybe, just maybe... She would have come to me, you know, just to see certain perspectives that she might have overlooked. As indeed she did. But they didn't count on one thing. I lied. I told them I didn't know anything about her, and that the last time I saw her was just the last time I was in the house. Um, to put in softer words, they never apologized to me. They invited me to lunch, but they never apologized. So, I politely declined and came to the house, not without asking Mom if Jordan was still upset about everything that happened, though. She told me just a little bit, but he swallowed his pride, as always, to give priority to his wife and son. As a curious fact, in the note from what little I read, there was a mention to me, saying that I, unlike Jordan, was a good person and that I did not deserve what they were putting me through. She also wrote to my brother directly that this was his karma for being an insensitive bully to his family. Now his family's going to get rid of him. I won't deny it that it didn't make me feel a little bit more at peace. But still, I was only interested in getting home safe and sound, thinking that there was nothing left to incriminate me. Final update. Guys, it's, it's funny. It's funny how the conditions of the streets of the neighborhood to work because for one little spark it all went up in smoke for Jordan. His popularity's been decimated because the news of what happened with his wife spread. More than seeing it as a dishonorable act of her, it was seen as something cowardly of him. Mostly because of all that Jordan had talked to me about with other people. Ironic, isn't it? After he bragged about everything he had said about me, well, let's say that the neighborhood saw him as a worm who could not deliver what he said, and in street language, that says a lot about you. I even talked to some acquaintances of his who, look at this, the story is very funny. I was buying bread on the corner, and I noticed that they stared at me, violently making these street codes, and I also looked at them and they approached me. I was not afraid because I knew that they were my brother's friends, although they looked very young. They asked me about Jordan and started to laugh. They asked about Erie, knowing very well the context of the whole story. I told them to ask her herself if they saw her or the man who ran away with her, and with that little puff I got the rumor started that they left Jordan for someone else. This might seem like a simple accident, at least until I started telling the story to more people in the neighborhood. <laughs> By the end, you could tell that there wasn't a person who didn't know about Jordan's situation, and everybody felt sorry for him. I know that a few days ago, they yelled something at Jordan because he had insulted someone a while back, and he replied, How can you be afraid of someone who didn't even win by fighting someone else for his wife? It was the first time I saw Jordan euphoric chasing down the guy in the street, even though he was noticeably slower. He was now the laughing stock of the neighborhood. Even the kids were laughing at him, not knowing the background. I've never seen him look more pathetic. But it felt good to have my little revenge. Since then, he's been quieter and helping me out around the house. I want to believe that this was a positive change in his life and that, like me, he's finding a better place amid all the bad times. And I'm doing my bit in the streets to let everyone know what happened to him. And on another positive note, you know what I found out? Diane's whereabouts. She's reactivated her social accounts, but for all the photos that she's uploaded, she did it alone with no trace of the guy she left with. She even liked some of my photos. <laughs> but when she commented on something, I simply ignored her. I knew right away that it was a pitiful strategy to get back with me, but my friend, that ship has sailed. Then I was told that the guy she left with abandoned her and left her stranded, something that triggered her survival instinct and she ran straight. 
or I should say rather indirectly, to me. But now I'm not available. I'm walking around meeting a new girl who was introduced to me by my colleagues at work and with whom I feel I can have a good thing going with. I know there must be a lot of paperwork involved, but Diane left me a considerable period. I know that on a legal level, that must carry some weight. What matters here is that, in effect, what they say is always true. Karma comes to everyone, and it's best you treat others well because you never know when it'll all turn against you. What we witnessed was Jordan getting the karma that he truly deserved, but I do want to shout out OP for not giving in in that moment of weakness when Jordan's ex-wife confronts with, hey, I want to get with you out of a bit of revenge. OP did not stoop to those levels, and I think that that's a good thing. At the end of the day, everybody was calling Jordan out for being a coward, for basically not going through the same thing that he pestered his brother about going through, and he just couldn't handle it. I want to know what you guys thought about the story, so let's discuss it down below in the comment section, guys. Thank you for joining me on today's video. I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you want more daily videos, consider subscribing. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow, and of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.